hey guys, welcome to my review of Batman Incorporated issue number 8. Uh, now before I begin this review, I would like to basically warn some viewers out there uh, that I will be spoiling one major moment in this issue because in order for me to do this review, I would actually have to spoil this one major moment and actually discuss it. Um, in the review. So if you guys don't want to know what that spoiler is, please close this video and go pick up the issue yourself or go online and find out the information on your own because the spoiler has been out on the internet before this issue even came out. It's been out since I believe Monday. Um, so I already read the spoiler too before the issue came out. So if you guys want to know what that is, just go check online or pick up the issue on your own. Uh, so yeah, let's begin this review. Now, um, I would like to say first that I did pick up the first issue of Batman Incorporated, and I didn't really like it, so I just, you know, you know, uh, you know, held out on it. I didn't want to pick it up, and then I heard Matches Malone was coming back, so from then on, I started reading uh, Batman Incorporated again. I did pick up issue two along the way, um, and it was good, you know, it was good. And then um, I didn't read issue number seven, so I didn't know what actually happened prior to this issue. Uh, besides the fact that I do know Talia's Leviathan um, brainwash group or followers um, basically are creating havoc amongst uh, Gotham City and now Batman and his Batman Incorporated gang has to try to stop this and there has been a couple of deaths along the way, some tragedies, um, and this is all happening right now at this exact moment as Talia and her gang of Leviathan uh, followers are just creating just some big a mass of chaos. Um, and along this way, Damien is actually held off in the Batcave because Bruce knows that Talia wants Damien and his life could potentially be in danger. So Damien is, you know, excluded from, you know, all of this fighting. You know, he, he can't go into this. He can't do anything. But of course, stubborn as Damien is, he comes along into this fight. Now we open up with actually Damien coming into the scene. Uh, he's heading towards Wayne Tower to help along the fight uh, with the Batman Incorporated gang against the uh, Leviathan followers and against his mother as well. So he helps alongside Commissioner Gordon and Nightwing and Tim Drake has, you know, a moment in this issue where he actually saves a civilian. Um, but then, you know, Damon comes in and he partners up with Nightwing again to get reunited. And along this, they fight off uh, against some Leviathan group members. And uh, in the end, basically, Damien has to face off against his clone assassin. And they basically brawl out. Now, while all this is actually happening, Bruce is captured by Talia, placed in a safe, and he's all tied up and dumped into a pool of water. And now he's trying to escape and trying to head towards Wayne Tower to see what's going on and see if he can actually save Damien before, you know, it's too late, before anything bad happens. So he's trying to desperately, you know, escape from this um, trap he's been put in. Now, as Damien's brawling against, you know, his clone assassin, he's getting riddled with bullets and arrows, and he takes it like a champ. Uh, but in the end, he really can't do much. He does his best. He tries to fight it out as long as he can. But in the end, his clone assassin basically pummels him. He basically beats him to death. And what Damien initially wants to do is try to stop his mother from, you know, continuing her, you know, attack on Gotham, you know, stopping all of this, hoping there is some light in this that she, he can actually stop his mother and that his mother would actually listen to him because, you know, he thinks that, you know, I'm his son. No, I'm her son and I could do something and, you know, you're my mother. But in the end, of course, like I said, Damien um, gets beaten up in the, to a pulp. There is one moment where I actually... Um, the clone assassin takes Damien and basically slams his back on his knee. It's kind of remin uh, reminiscent to, you know, Bane breaking Batman's back, but damn, look at Damien. He's really, really taking a beating. And in the end, you do see his mangled body and he's just bleeding. And in the end, he doesn't give up the fight. He's, he basically spits in his clone assassin's face. And that's when um, his clone takes a sword and impales it through Damien's chest killing him instantly. Um, and along this, Batman does escape from his trap, but he makes it too late. And there lays a cold, dead corpse. Damien Wayne's corpse, all mangled up, bleeding out. And Bruce is holding him in his arms, just the way he was holding Jason in um, the death in the family story arc, where Jason died. Um, now, that's basically all that happens in this issue. That's the major spoiler, the major you know, wow moment that everybody's supposed to get in this issue that Damien dies. Um, 
So let's discuss this issue. So um, the good part I did like about this issue was the reunite, yeah, the reunitement with between um, Damien and Nightwing, which I believe was the most wonderful moment in this issue. It was like kind of touching, because when you really think about it, Grant Morrison wrote his Batman and Robin series with Dick Grayson as Batman and Damien Wayne as Robin, um, and they both basically worked together. And in the end, they created a bond so strong that they've actually became, you know, brothers, like blood brothers, actually. You know, they become really, really close along, you know, that whole span um, of them being partners, and which was phenomenal and great. I love that series. I love that um, Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne dynamic duo. I loved it so much. It was fantastic and great. And I really, really liked it. It was a really, really nice touch because if anybody were to speak to Damian or if Damian were to speak to anybody before his death, I believe it was fitting that it would have been Dick Grayson himself. I know some people might argue with me and like I said, this could be debatable, you know, with anybody. So this is just strictly my opinion. Um, for me, I believe, yeah, it's tr I feel like it would be suitable that Damien would speak to Dick Grayson in his final moments. If he was going to die, it would be with Dick Grayson. Because, like I said, he's created such a strong bond with Dick. He's gone through so much from the Joker rising from a Lazarus pit and trying to create chaos once again in Gotham. And him beating him across the face with a crowbar. Though that isn't in continuity anymore, roughly, you know, but, um... Still, most of the events that happened between Dick and Damien were really, really significant. He, Dick was the first person that was ever, you know, trying to open up Damien. He, like, Damien opened up to Dick first, before, I think, before anybody else. Maybe Alfred, but like I said, before anybody else. He technically didn't like anybody. He was a potential, you know, snot-nosed brat. You know, he was a dick. But in the end, you know, Dick Grayson himself opened up Damien. He became a little bit more closer to, you know, other people had more, you know, kind of morals and feelings, you would say. And like I said, it was fitting that these two, you know, basically reunited and spoke one last, you know, few lines of dialogue. And one of my favorite uh, lines in this issue was when Damien basically says that, you know, out of all everybody, you know, you are my favorite partner. You know, Richard, we were the best. And no, you know, no matter what anybody says, we were together. We were just awesome together. You know, we were like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and, you know, he didn't say that, but you know, that's what he's trying to say is that they've been together for so long that you know, yeah, he's stating that they have been you know really really close and their brother is that to the point where he, he, I bet you he would give his life for Dick. You know, I would say that. And um, yeah, that's what I basically like about this issue. Um, and also, you did get to see a sense of Damien's heroicness and more of his character already developed because of the fact that in the end of this issue or before he fights his clone, he basically comes out because he wants to stop his mother. You know, he wants to stop all this fighting, all this killing, everything like that. I believe, you know, the old Damien wouldn't really care. He would be heartless. He would be, you know, just cold. You know, he wouldn't care. He would just you know, basically agree with his mother. Like, of course, take over Gotham. Who cares? This is a rundown city anyways. My dad's a bad Batman. He can't do anything. I should be Batman. That's what I feel like the old Damien would say, that he should rule Gotham City with the Iron Fist, just like his mother wanted to. But near the end, Damien has developed so much that he actually wants to try to stop his mother. And I bet you, yeah, also he said he hates his mother. He doesn't like her. But in the end, he says, she's still my mother. I have to try to do something. And like I said, the old Damien wouldn't care. He probably would use that hatred to try to kill her evenly. You know, he would probably try to do that. Just to use all his hatred to try to kill his own mother. But in the end, you know, he's finally gotten to that point where he does care. Even if it's his mother, even if she's doing something bad, he won't kill her. He wants her to stop. And that's what I really liked about this issue. It basically basically revolved all around Damien before the moment he died. And that is very, very fitting because you want the issue to focus on Damien. You don't want it to focus on anything else besides, you know, maybe the major event that's happening, but also focus on the character that's about to die. Because if you want him to get some closure before he died, please do a good send-off for him. And I felt like it was an okay send-off. In the end, when he died, he did die a heroic death. He fought like a hero, you know, he died like a hero, 
And I bet you I would, I bet you he would agree too that he died out like a hero. He fought for what he believed in. And he died, you know, he fought, he fought it out like a man. Like a true hero would. And that is really, really nice. But in a sense, um, you could say the spoiler that I read online about his death already did kind of kill the moment for me as, you know, he gets stabbed through the heart because I already know it's coming. Um, but it doesn't, but also the kill doesn't really leave this kind of imprint on your mind, you know? It doesn't leave an impact towards the reader itself because, we, you know, we do care about Damien dying, you know? We do feel like, okay, this is a really, really big deal here, you know? He's going to die, you know, what are we going to do now? Who's going to be the new Robin? But at the same time, it's like, Grant Morrison, really? Do you really need to do this? Like, it's gotten to the point where I feel like I know he's going to come back, so personally... I do feel sad that he's dead, but to the point where I'm like, yeah, I know he's going to be back probably, but um, I felt like his death wasn't necessary. Like, I know Grant Morrison says, like, okay, his character is done. He's done developing, you know, um, and it's over. It's done with. You can't do anything else with this character. Or, you know, I feel like it's over for Damien. There's nothing left I can do for him, and I believe it's time for him to go. And that's why he wants to end Damien. But... In the end, I feel like, no, there's still much left to talk about with Damien. Yes, I believe his character has been really developed. Yes, I feel like he has become my favorite Robin right now. As of this moment, he's been tied with Dick Grayson. You know, I used to... I never liked Damien. I used to put him on the, uh, you know, below the list of all the other Robins. But now I believe he's actually reached the top because he has gone through so much character development to the point where, you know, you want to see more. You do want to see more. I believe... People who are watching this review right now, you guys, you guys want to see Damien develop a little bit more. Because um, I know some friends out there, I've actually talked about his death, and some of them actually want to see Damien play with kids his own age. He's an 11, 12-year-old boy, you know, who is very smart, very athletic, he knows how to fight, he does a lot of things that are very maturish for his age, and he doesn't really act his own age around you know, kids his own age. He does. He even states one time when he's um, with Steph Brown, I don't like kids. I hate them. You know, why would I ever be around these kind of people? You know, he's gone to the point where he's so mature he can, you know, act his own age, which is to the point where my friends believe that, you know, he should be playing with kids his own age. He should have a life. He should let his guard down, which you do kind of see. Now, I'm going to go off tangent, and this is basically near the end of my review. This is something I want to talk about. In the end, um, not in the end, but in issue number 17, The Red Hood and the Outlaws, Arsenal throws a football at Damien. And prior to this, they were actually arguing and fighting. But in the end, you know, Arsenal shrugs it off, throws a football at Damien. And Damien doesn't catch the ball at first. He's like, what is the purpose of catching this ball? What, 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 what is this? What, what, what's the deal? You know, what do I get out of it if I catch this ball? And Arsenal's like, oh, come on, dude. Just catch the ball. Just do it. And Damien rolls with it. And you actually see him play catch with Arsenal. Yes, Arsenal isn't typically, you know, Damien's age. But in that sense, you actually see him actually have some fun. You know, I don't know if it was fun. But, you know, to me, it's great to see him actually loosen up a little bit. You know, he did have a little brawl with Arsenal. But he did let his walls down just a little bit. You know, just to have a little fun. You know, playing catch isn't that big of a deal to him but in the end to the readers it is a big deal you know this is something we don't see Damon get often you know um and also one thing I would like to mention is in the end of issue number 17 of Nightwing um Dick Grayson is, pro is already depressed because he lost everything you know he's separated from the Bat family now um you know he's lost a circus and he's lost everybody in his life you know uh he's lost someone he used to love and it's it's totally destroyed. His life is totally destroyed. Everybody comes around and tries to help him. I think Bruce tries to come. Barbara, Lucius Fox. A lot of people try to come to his aid. But he simply just says, Eh, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. I can deal with it. It's nothing. Like, he shrugs it off. But you can tell there's something wrong. And along, you know, while everybody's trying to comfort Dick. And he's just, you know, pushing them away. Damien's there watching him. And he comes out near the end and says, Dick, this isn't you. Stop acting all you know, sorrowful and just, or, or sad and depressed, you know, this isn't you, Dick, and basically, 
Damien snaps stick out of his funk. And I felt like it was really, really nice. Like I said, if there was one character that would ever snap Dick Grayson out of, you know, depression or anything else like that, it would be Damien. Even, I believe, yeah, Bruce. But the same thing is that with Bruce, you know, he did kind of lie to the family. He did high secrets from the Bat family. So Dick can't normally always trust um, Bruce. But I believe Dick can always trust, you know, Damon. He could also trust Alfred. Um, but I believe, you know, Dick and Damon have gone through so much to the point where, you know, it's fitting for Damon to actually do that to Dick. Uh, to Dick. But, um, yeah, that is... I'm sorry if I did actually go on off tangent. I'm, I'm sorry if you guys didn't want to hear me ramble on about all that stuff. If you did, I'm, I'm, I hope you guys liked it, but... Um, yeah, in my initial review is that I thought this issue was potentially okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was, eh, you know, it's like a good read. It's enjoyable, you know. It's the final moments of Damien, and I think Grant Morrison did, in fact, kind of, I would say, teeny tiny bit, give him a little good send-off. Just a little bit. I mean, with the whole moment with Dick and Damien was phenomenal seeing him try to stop his mother even though you know he hates his mother he still tries to stop her he still tries to you know um negotiate you know he's not thinking like he was the old Damien. he's thinking you know rationally now you know he's not thinking with violence even though he is using violence to fight off against his clone which it's only for self-defense um but i believe you know i think grant morrison did it just a little tiny bit of a little good send-off for him if he was going it that he died now. Like I said, I don't think his death was great. I'm not saying I support his death. Like I said, I don't like it. I don't support it. I don't agree with it. Because, like I said, it doesn't really do anything much. And in the issue number 18s, you will see all these different covers. It's like... The Bat Family can never have a good, happy moment. And I know a lot of people are going to say, like, oh yeah, the Bat Family is supposed to be depressing. You know, they're, they're dark characters. When you really think about it, yes, you're in a dark setting. Gotham City is dark, but Dick Grayson's supposed to be happy, happy all the time. He's supposed to be, you know, cheerful, creating jokes um, here and there. But he's not always that dark, you know. Like in the old Batman Robin series, it's already been stated, he's not Bruce Wayne. He's Dick Grayson. He's supposed to be happy. But now it seems like, like I said, DC since the reboot, they've been going to this turn of this this dark tone, and it doesn't really feel. And like, it's just so depressing. You know, just seeing him die, Damien die, was depressing enough. Seeing everything that's going on in the Bat Family is just, like, going downhill. And it's like, when are we going to see a glimmer of light or whatever? But, um, yeah, my re my initial rating for this issue, I would rate a, uh, would I give it a four? I would give it a... I would give it a heavy 3.5 out of 5, in my opinion. I would give maybe a 4, maybe a 4, 3.5, or it's between 3.5 and a 4 for me, honestly. I mean, I'm not saying it was a great issue, it was like a good read, it was okay, you know, it had some flaws, like his death. Majorly, it's his death. And um, personally, I didn't really, I wasn't really invested in the whole Le Leviathan story arc, to tell you the truth. Um, but, um, like I said, this is just my opinion, and this is you know, what I want to get to people out there. You know, if you want to see this, uh, that's why you're watching this video, right? It's my opinion. I say it's a good pickup, and also I would like to mention that when I was picking this issue up, my God, I went to my comic book store, and these were going off the shelves like it was hotcakes. I'm not kidding you. It, people wanted this cover, like like no, no tomorrow. And my comic book store only gives one per purchase. Not like one per purchase for every single comic book, but only for this cover because I believe they said it was a variant cover. Um, that's why he's, he normally only sells variant covers one per person, you know, so it's fair share. Um, so I got, I'm lucky, I'm glad I got my own copy here. I believe they're going to reprint more uh, in March. Um, but other than that, uh, this is my review of Batman Incorporated issue number eight. I rate it a 3.5 between Three, okay, between the 3.5 out of 4. Hope you liked this review. I'm sorry if it was a bit long, but I hope you enjoyed it anyways. Um, if not, I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, probably do better next time. But yeah, that's just my initial review, and I'll talk to you guys later. So see you guys. Leave your comments below. Um, give me your thoughts on it. Um, tell me how you felt. Uh, I would love to discuss with uh, this about, uh, about this with you guys, you know. Uh, I like talking to you guys, so yeah. See you guys later. So thanks for watching.